my name is uh, Paul Erik Asborn. I'm working in the high north. And today I will uh, make a small lecture about the field equipment on scientific expeditions, what we can use and uh, some small things. There is more than uh, 600 different type of normal field equipment for different type of measurements and such. Uh, but even then there's a lot of specialized equipment. So I will only manage to uh, talk a little bit about the things. In my station, we have approximately uh, 300 different type of field equipment. Uh, so I just uh, picked a few uh, along with me, which I will present, but uh, maybe they are of uh, interest. At least it uh, will make an uh, overview uh, about how we are thinking when we are thinking for the field work. Field, work, uh, field uh, equipment uh, uh, is the tool that we need to do, absorb, to measure and complete the samples and collect the samples when we are making the studies. Uh, they are uh, very diverse and uh, one of the things is that uh, you need to actually make some of the tools yourself and often you need to repair the different type of tools. So, the first thing is uh, to, of two uh, field equipment, actually, even for the scientific things, is uh, personal things. And then I will talk a little bit about aquatic things and then a little bit a land, about land uh, things, uh, and like, uh, like terrestrial. And then I will talk a little bit about storage and taking care of the samples. It will come a little bit mixed, so it's not uh, totally uh, uh, organized in such, because there are some pictures with a little bit of crossover. <clears throat> About the personal personal thing, uh, which is basically, it's uh, the protection. And then uh, it's the second, which is the health, uh, safety and environment issues, which uh, to take care of yourself, to take care of uh, your uh, environment or our environment. So I have uh, collected a few things which I usually carry along. And that is, first of all, it is the notebook. This is uh, one of my notebooks. And for the notebook, I use pencil. It looks very little. Of course, this is a, a small uh, pencil, but still I don't use a pen. So if you look into the, into, into the book, it looks quite scrabbly, but with a, a pen in the rain or in the frost, it will not work. The pencil is a fabulous tool that works even in the bad rain and when it is snowing and when it is cold. So therefore we use this type of all weather books, which is a type of a paper that stands a little bit of water. Of course, it gets wet, but it uh, doesn't dissolve into particles. So this is the sum of the first. Otherwise, of course, we need uh, clothing, which is fitting for the different type of uh, weather conditions. So, of course, for the summer conditions, we have trousers. And this normally, they should be uh, carrying it uh, standing. They should be standing for a, a different type of rain and precipitation and water and uh, everything gets wet when you walk in the forest uh, with the uh, uh, bushes slashing your feet and then of course your boots uh, is getting wet but you need to have like plastic uh, bags that you put your dry feet with your dry socks into the plastic bags after the, the boots have been wet and of course one of the of course one of the interesting things for the summer you use darker clothes but in the winter we usually use uh, like this this fleece camouflage things it's uh, uh, one thing when you're making physical observation that doesn't matter much but when you're making observations of birds and animals and such things then you should have something that don't make so much contrast when you're walking and working in the forest and in the wild in the outdoor outside so the, these things is uh, important. 
to think about to think about and you learn uh, about them but uh, one of my uh, special things is of course the mosquito hat so in the in the summer the mosquitoes is horrible so now you I just put it on top but you can put yourself inside the mosquito hats they are actually very vulnerable when you're sitting waiting for a bird in several hours or you're sitting waiting uh, to, for your samples to make the collection so there is also a different type of uh, garment clothings that protect you from the bugs so here is a couple of different jackets very light jackets which uh, is open so you don't sweat and if you get wet it will evaporate and dry qu very quickly such things is uh, very very nice to have and then of course this is this is my belt here i have my cup i have my knife on the belt and of course i have a leather, leather man uh, at least leather man tool is always needed especially when you're far from people then you don't know where, where, where to what to do if you have a don't have a leather man because then you can open the different devices and start small repairment also uh, super glue and other things is important and one thing always in the backpack is this duct tape this mac iver tape that is as well one of the things that we need and then of course first aid kits and such and then for making observation we need the personal things of glasses so this is uv uh, sunglasses which is helping to see through water uh, surf, surf, the surface of the water search different type uh, of uh, sunglasses for the different purposes that's a part of your personal uh, belongings when you are going into the forest to make observations and sampling for example fish sampling to see the fish properly when you're making the electrofishing you will see see it a little bit later search and then uh, second second uh, second most uh, important thing is the gps so using any type of a gps is always needed uh, to make the, uh, the orientation of the places that you work i don't i don't need the, the gps for navigation but it helps to find the exact plot when other people has making their uh, their places uh, of uh, putting out some uh, equipment or something then it's much more easier for me to find it when we have the gps plots and of course telephone telephone don't work uh, because the telephone system is uh, not uh, fully covering the country so that is uh, you need a satellite uh, telephone of course if you wanted to communicate but telephone can make you making some pictures some different things uh, and and then assisting you uh, to make notes and such things and also you we use uh, different type of uh, tablets uh, this uh, uh, I've, uh, what to call yeah so and one thing which is you always need when you are in the field is a lighter lighter is always in my pocket i don't smoke but uh, sometimes we need to make a fire uh, especially when you fall into the water and then you need to dry out and then you need to make a fire to to dry out or you dry your partner and also when ropes is entangling and you need to to uh, uh, repair uh, ropes or uh, uh, strings then a uh, uh, lighter is one of the things that you can definitively have for the use you hear me yeah I see we got some more visitors I'm very happy so uh, oh
So a little bit about field work in the water. So here, of course, you see uh, the, uh, actually it's me uh, swimming. So this is my diving suit. So here, you see the same diving suit with the back opening. There is my head coming out. This is a diving suit made of uh, 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 different shell uh, components, so it is very strong and can uh, it can last when it's uh, rushed uh, and shrubbed to uh, sharp stones and barbed wires and these things in the in the in the river. So of course, using different type of uh, masks, diving mask, diving gears, and such things is important. And then, of course, walking, working in water, you always should have a uh, rescue floater. So this uh, safety things is very important. You never know; uh, it doesn't need to be you that uh, get in problems. And when you have such a thing on your neck, then you can help other people much better. And you can save a lot of equipment. If you have this thing and you fall into the water, you can still keep the equipment while the thing is opening and let you fly float instead of that you need to drop it and then let the thing sink down and you have to swim to the shore alone. But uh, swimming is uh, a fantastic team, but you need to be a, a little bit uh, experienced, especially in the current. So therefore, I'm a scientific diver. I'm a diver of uh, freshwater river systems. So I have a EU license, a professional license for these things. Okay. So here on the picture, you see an uh, aquascope, the blue there, or the, the orange one, which is actually the same as this. So this looks like such. So I put my head in here, and then I can see into the water. The point is to, uh, to, to, uh, to get below the surface uh, of the water, because the surface is making all the reflections. So inside here, you might see, it looks like this way when you're looking from above. So aquascope you can make yourself uh, very easily from different things. It doesn't need to be uh, to be a type of uh, fancy thing. But I bought these Italian ones uh, for a few uh, tens of euros. But actually they are quite heavy. So there is other ones that is homemade, which I've seen, which is small and compact and doesn't weigh so much. So when you're walking 20 kilometers or 50 kilometers into the forest to go to a small creek like this to see, uh, look for the mussels or other animals in the river, then this is uh, a good thing to have it quite as light as possible. Another thing uh, to measure the, like the mussels in the river is like having a caliper caliper that is uh, calibrated that is quite important to have the right one to make the correct measurements so calipers is one of my my favorite tools as well uh, in the different uh, 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 tools for the collection here i'm collecting dna so i use the the uh, 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 q-tip uh, from uh, especially from jordan just to make commercial out of it well but uh, there's different type of Q-tips, and I have different type of glue on to the cotton and the, and the stick. And that uh, some of them they are destroying the samples, and some is not destroying. So here we have a different type of uh, tools. So in a, a collection, we make the collection of the sample of the DNA from the mussel and put, put the mussel into the river again. We don't kill the mussel. You see another type of a caliper, and you see scissors and tweezers, and here I got a couple of different tweezers. This is a very fine tweezer. This is the one which I use for the for the insects. 
So this uh, is uh, not crushing the insects, for example. Then we have to avoid metal into contamination when we're making uh, samples of uh, heavy for heavy metal analysis. We have like plastic tweezers. And then of course we have uh, scalpels. So this is a scalpel with the shaft. And here is the, the blade. So making the, the thing like this, then you have the cutter. And of course using knives, different type of knives to make the collection is uh, also important. But uh, there is uh, sometimes when you're making heavy metal analysis, then you should not use a metal when you make your collection. So this is actually a, a porcelain knife. So it's made out of uh, tea, like the same as a teapot actually. So this is, uh, you have to sharpen it, uh, you have to treat it, you have to wash it. And always when you're making such things as these uh, genetical samples, you have to be very sure that you uh, don't contaminate the, the, the samples as well. Uh, when you're working with either uh, um, organic pollutants or you may work with um, with heavy metals, so you always need to have gloves. Ah, small, always too small gloves for me. But uh, gloves is uh, a very important part of the scientific uh, sampling equipment. It uh, also uh, protect yourself from some of the agents. So some of the agents we are using is this alcohol. This is 96% uh, alcohol with 2% methyl uh, isobutyl ketone, which is uh, then this isobutyl ketone is uh, made it undrinkable. But uh, still, this is uh, good for some type of uh, things and especially for cleaning. So then cleaning the. The, the 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 samples like this, for example. So splashing a little bit. That's okay. It, it's all the alcohol, so it dries away. But it smells a little bit. This is a too. So for a different type of samples, this uh, type of uh, alcohol is uh, used. I know it's full of nice alcohol here, or bad alcohol actually. Of course, we use different boats. These are some of the boats now. Uh, here's other boat, and we have quite a lot of different boats for different type of purposes. So, like you see, this uh, this boat here, the inflatables, they are weighing 60 kilos, so you can carry them uh, through the forest, uh, f uh, from uh, lake to lake, to from water system to water system. This is a water sampler. So actually this thing claps into there and this thing here claps into there and then this glass container is then uh, collecting two liters of water. So it uh, looks uh, pretty much like this. If you see here, there's a, there's a weight and the weight is uh, hitting on the top there and then this weight makes this small bolt going down, this part here going down, so the, the this air which is there fall down, and that makes the top of the lid uh, going to the to the central box. And the same happens then with a counter movement because of these things here. So then the 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 thing in the bot the lid in the bottom is closing from the other. So here is the the thing uh, closed, and here you see. Uh, temperature uh, meter, a thermometer, and then underneath it is the opening for the getting out the water to from the from, that we collect. So the, by this one we collect from different uh, levels of the uh, the water column. So from uh, five meter, uh, ten meters, uh, fifteen meters, and the bottom, for example. Uh, one of the things when we are collecting is often we collect uh, water from surface, five centimeter on the surface, and then uh, about five meter, and then about ten meter, and then we find the thermocline. So in freshwater system and also in the sea, there is different layers with different temperatures. So often you have a warmer upper uh, part, and then you have a colder lower part, and the, the border between the warm and the cold is the thermocline. 
And this thermoclin is very important because that keeps two different bodies of water, which we make our collection of the, the water samples. So this is water samples that is basically used for uh, organic material analysis, uh, uh, like pollu pollutant organics, but also uh, metal. So when we are going to use this, we need to clean it first with, with water, with destilli destillated water, so it's totally clean and does not uh, contaminate our samples. But there's a lot of standards for every of these things to, uh, to how we make the collections. So here you see uh, some boxes. In the boxes we have the different type of uh, bottles, vials, uh, boxes. To, uh, to make the different type of uh, samples. Both of these here is uh, of uh, plastic. We also use uh, uh, glass bottles. Uh, for example, when we are making samples for uh, the organic uh, uh, contaminants, then we need to use uh, glass bottles. But this is made, uh, some samples that um, I will use. Um, this, this one I will use uh, tomorrow. Then I will uh, drive uh, to 200 kilometers, approximately one way to make some samples in one river. And this is uh, I'm going to use on Sunday. And then I'm going to collect the water from a river where I have to walk more than 50 kilometers. That's nice. So, so then the different uh, type uh, have different uh, bottles from the different laboratories, from the different type of analysis which the different type of the laboratories is making. If you have any question, please uh, open your microphone and ask me. Or if you just like to write a chat, I will try to follow. But um, if I, if there is anything, just interrupt me, please. And of course, there is uh, several ways to make them uh, and monitoring of uh, the, the quality of the water. I was uh, going to my my uh, my equipment to find my Seki disk uh, yesterday, and then I uh, discovered that somebody has uh, borrowed my Seki disk, so there was no Seki disk there, so I could ha hold in my hand. But a Seki disk is uh, actually a very interesting little tool. Uh, which is quite important and has been used in a lot of different uh, uh, research, both in marine and in fresh water. So the Seki disk was uh, created uh, in uh, 1865 by Angelo Secchi from Italy. It's a round plate, approximately uh, 30 centimeter in diameter, and he, uh, uh, Secchi made this uh, totally white. And this is used to uh, to uh, uh, submerge into the uh, water to see how long distance the light is uh, tra able to travel. So, well, actually, this is a lot of nice uh, calculations. Uh, you see some formulas, and then the Seki is actually calculating this K, which is down here. So what we do is to lower the Seki desk uh, into the water. And we see where it starts to disappear and make the notation how deep this is, how many meters or centimeters. And then we take it below and then we see the thing disappears. And then this, uh, when it disappears, we take it even a little bit lower and then we t pull it back to see where it gets visible again. And then we find this as the average uh, depth of the Seki. The Seki is uh, uh, telling about the reflections in the water, which is made by different type of particles. So this is uh, actually something called uh, Beer-Lampert's uh, law, uh, and which is uh, very nice physics. So when you like to make your physics with your pupils, uh, then you, the pupils can calculate this and do this in the practice, and then they learn quite a lot of the mathematics and the physics. It's a lot of these things to read. One of the things is this is for the marine. That's the original size, about 30 centimeter. And then it, this has been adjusted about 1900 to be about 20 centimeter for freshwater. Uh, and also in freshwater, they divide it in uh, four uh, sectors, two black sectors and two white sectors. 
us to, to see the contrast better because you have different colorations in 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 fresh water the thing is to have this uh, this uh, like white plate and then underneath you have a weight and so the weight is pulling it and keeping it straight so because it's a white plate it will fall down like this or sink like this and then uh, the weight is balancing and so it's easier to see it going straight okay other nice things of course we need to measure the temperature here for example so thermometers in different ways both for putting into the into the water and such and then we have of course uh i will, I will find my there is this this little thing here is a ph meter so in the bottom here you see the yeah uh, the this uh, uh, glass bulb this is measuring the, uh, the the pH and this is the the metal there is measuring the temperature so this is when I turn it on it doesn't work now because I need to have it submerged into water to to see it but this is a handheld temperature and pH meter so it's a uh, this is a quite quite okay things very light and is very quite okay quality to to uh, to uh, to measure things in many many years and it doesn't cost so much so it's oh it's okay what else and this this is a conductivity meter and here is the probe and inside here there's actually four different uh, uh, sets of uh, uh, analytic metals when which is making this a uh, sensor that uh, which is this which we submerge into the water and then we read out like this and then we read out the result on this still this doesn't work until we put it into the water so this is also uh, a quite okay about 200 grams a little bit more than 200 grams so it's it's, pos it's possible to carry a lot then we have different type of temperature loggers like the thermometers but here is here is actually a temperature logger so this little thing here is a, a temperature logger it, it makes the temperature every uh, half hour i put it to every half hour i can put it to every 10 minutes but this is to put on a string and then put it down to in into water so here uh, it is uh, having a sensor so it's also uh, just by my nail you maybe see there that one that is the sensor of the of the light so it records temperature combined with light in the water in, so I can measure in the different layers of the water how the quality is. And the beauty about this, this is lasting for one and a half year if I make it to make the analysis every half hour. And then all this is uh, stored inside of it. And then I go to the field with this tube connected to a computer and put the temperature logger in here and then I start the thing by pushing the, this little handle here, this one, and then, so it's blinking fail, you see red red light blinking, so it should be a green light, uh, but this is because the battery of this one is out, so I need to change the battery of this. But then you'd read, read this out when you're in the field, and you'd exchange the battery, it's quite easy, you have some screws here and then it's just to pop out and take out the battery you see the battery inside there okay this is for for uh, for water there is a lot of other temperature loggers for uh, terrestrial things so this is one of the other types this uh, this is uh, not so good 
it need to have a couple of them on the same place because sometimes these loggers uh, is uh, uh, disappearing, uh, doesn't make the recording properly and such things. But they don't cost much. These ones here, uh, like I have here in my, my left hand, will cost about uh, uh, 50 euro. Well, they are quite expensive, but they last for many, many years. This one is like uh, to, uh, 20 euro. There's a lot of different type of these. Yeah, and then I need to put uh, another uh, clean glove to my fingers. Because now I'm going to show you something named DTG. That is a thin layer passive detectors. And this is uh, basically in something like this. I will show you. So inside in the box here I have this um, main secret. So here. You see, in there is a plastic hole, and here is the membrane. This membrane, which is there, that is uh, several uh, membranes after each other, which is then uh, allowing different type of metals going to the into the different layers, and then accumulate. And after two months, we take this up again, and then we measure what type of uh, metal contamination we have in this uh, samples. This is uh, not so very cheap, but still uh, it's uh, possible. It costs approximately 160 euro to make the analysis and everything, this, this including the analysis. This is a plastic hose. So you put the thing in, in here and then put this into the water and make it with an anchor, an anchor which is not metal. So maybe a stone or something to make it uh, make it uh, st staying where it should be in in the, close to the bottom or in on a uh, rope close to the surface. So this is a DTG passive pollution sampler, especially for heavy metals. You have any question? Next thing I have is an um, uh, uh, ex example of a uh, uh, grab sampler. This is a uh, Van Veen uh, grab. So this is the rope, and here you see the uh, thing itself. It's two arms with, with like, two jaws, which is then used for the sedimentation uh, collection. So it, here you see the principle in a way here. So it goes down to the sediment and take a big jaw and then it collect uh, close and then you can take the sample to the, to the, to the shore. So it looks like this. So it, uh, when, it's, uh, falls, uh, when it's falling down, it will go down. And then when you start pulling the rope, the, there's a trigger here that will uh, uh, be released and then the thing will close their jaws. It takes approximately half a liter of uh, sediment, uh, a little bit more than half a liter, depending. But basically, it's, uh, it, do it does not full, full, totally full. It makes maybe half full. That's the, the average. It's not for very uh, soft uh, sediment. It's for like sand and these small gravels and such. Then you take the content onto a plate uh, or a tray, and then you start sorting it. And then you take out the animals that you like or the other type of samples that you like. And then you, you put this into the containers and take it to the, to the, uh, to the laboratories. This is a dredge. So this is to be pulled after a boat. Uh, so this will then run on the bottom like it's here. Uh, it's an opening on this side, so you will pull this and it will cut a little bit into the uh, sediments when, when you're pulling the, 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 uh, the dredge after the boat. So this is a coarse net that will protect this inner net uh, from stones and other things on the bottom. 
So then you get these uh, these things uh, a little bit more uh, protected. So this uh, usually we uh, uh, make uh, dredging 50 meters by 50 meters, 50 meter long transects. So this is used in freshwater uh, for uh, uh, mollusks and snails and all such, uh, which is living on the bottom or in the top of the bottom surface. The other uh, here will make the small animals living down to about 10 centimeter. You see the opening here is like uh, 10 centimeter long, long, 10 centimeter long jaws. Yeah. So of course, uh, fishing, a different type of fishing, fishing with nets to get the, the fish to make the samples. That is important. I have behind me here. I have a type of a net. This is uh, what you see on the picture is uh, like a com commercial nets, but here is scientific nets. And this is a little bit entangled. So here, this is about 30 meters, and, and the, the, this 30 meters is divided into 12 panels. 12 zones inside in this and here you have different sizes of the mesh sizes of the the net itself so you see these masks and then a little bit further we have like uh, it's not so easy but you see different sizes of masks and the the point here is when you have this uh, mix of different uh, mask sizes then you can calculate from the different types of mosques the number of fishes and you, we measure the fish and see what species of fish and all such and then we get the structure of the fish community in in the lake uh, commercial net will basically f uh, fish on only one size or a few sizes of the fish but uh, this net here with a lot of different panels from five millimeter to the higher that will basically uh, fish uh, most type of the fish which is uh, swimming into the net. These are uh, bottom nets that will f go to the bottom and stay ab ab on the bottom. So they are approximately one and a half meter deep. We have, we have other nets which is about about six meter deep, which we use for the for the for the other type of fish search fish research and this is uh, uh, electrofishing here you see this uh, rescue uh, thing you wearing the sunglasses to see through the reflection of the water here is a type of uh, a hoof but it is uh, actually an anode so here is the the, the rod with the anode and here is a, a normal hoof to, to catch the fish It looks a little bit more like this. Here's the node the, with the hoof it in bottom. And here uh, is the other man with the other thing. On the back, he has a uh, uh, central, which is uh, uh, making the different type of uh, uh, electricity. So electricity is uh, confined to the right uh, level of the conductivity in the water, because conductivity is, means how uh, the, the electricity is going in the water. And this is different from uh, river to river, but also different in the different part of the river. And then also, of course, different uh, the difference uh, through the air because of rain and precipitation, groundwater and these things. Here you see the cathode, which is in the water because you need an anode and a cathode. And under here is the battery. So this is uh, just search on the battery. So the battery comes up. This is the line down to the anode, which you see there. But by this, we go in the river to get the fish, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, which is there. We can make samples of the fish and put the fish back because the fish is not killed, or we can collect the fish to make further scientific samples. Then, of course, we measure the the length we are uh, fishing. 
So we see how many quadrat square meters and all such, and then we calculate the fish uh, densities, the population densities of the fish. Other things in the in the uh, in the aqua semi-aquatic rather is then different type of hoofs. I have a couple of them here. This. This you see here is uh, semi-wet, and this is also a semi-wet uh, 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 sledge uh, hoof. So it is just like this. So when when you use it, you use with the with this uh, sewing outside. A lot of people, when you work with the pupils for uh, and students for the first time, they put it the right way so it looks nice on the outside. And then uh, they get all the insects and all the things entangled into this. So remember to tell the pupils that they use it the right way. Then it's easier to get the things out of the hoof. Hoof, uh, hoofs uh, does not need to be uh, fancy. So these, these are my girl-looking uh, heart. This is my heart hoofs. They look nice and they work. This is very nice when we are going in the sea uh, shorelines to collect with the, like this dams as well, because this is uh, this um, this plastic uh, net uh, keeps a little bit easier into these things. When you have the other net, then is to collect every small uh, type of organisms. Yeah, and of course we have a, a different type of uh, field equipment like uh, this uh, tent. This is a Malaise, Malaise tent from the Belgium named Malaise that in the beginning of the century ago uh, made uh, a attempt to collect insects in the in the Southeast Asia, and he discovered that his tent was the best place to catch the insect. So he made a, a net trap out of looking like a tent functioning. So up here the insects is flying and then meets this black wall and then it goes to the white and then underneath the white here then the insects go up to the top which is there and then they go fall into this uh, opening here and down into this bucket which is there or the container which is there. So this is about one and a half meter wide. They are not so very expensive, uh, 50 euro or something uh, for such a tent. There's different qualities. One of the big problem is how the top is looking, how this thing here is uh, stable. So because uh, some of the, these tents is not stable and then this thing here does not work because it's close itself. So the insects go up here, but they don't go into the collector and down in the container. This is a Malaise tent. And here you see the catch in this uh, uh, Malaise tent, which is outside my house and outside the, the station here. So this has been collected uh, since 15th of uh, May. So this is a bumblebee and you see there's a bumblebee there and then there's several different type of uh, mosquitoes and flies and such and other insects so this is uh, this can be extremely um, uh, strong collectors uh, they can collect several thousands uh, of insects so they can this is this container here is half a liter and half a liter can be full in four three or four days they are in alcohol with the glycerol uh, components uh, because these ones is uh, just to be identified and uh, put into uh, stocks with needles and such. If we're going to make a genetic analysis, and then we need only we we, we must not use uh, glycol or these things because that destroy the the genetics, uh, the, the genes, and then uh, then we just use alcohol. Here is one of my other uh, collectors, which is uh, still working. Here is the uh, uh, transformer of the of the electricity, so we have high voltage here. Uh, 
And then this is a lamp of uh, outdoor, like the street lamps that you had in old days. And uh, not the new days, but uh, the old uh, days uh, lamps. The reason for this is uh, that uh, this lamp emits the right wavelengths of uh, uh, UV light. So it have all the fr uh, fractions of the UV light. So this is uh, for the insects, which is night uh, active. Uh, and then they get uh, uh, attracted by the light. So this is reflectors. Up here is uh, just a plexiglass. So the light is coming, going to the sky, collecting the insects from the top. And they come here, fly to the, uh, this, uh, these wings and fall down here into the tray. And then they get stored in the bottom here. So this can collect uh, maybe uh, two kilos of, uh, of moth and night butterflies during a small week. Can be enormous catches. This is another type of uh, black fly catch. It uses black light. Uh, so in here you have the black light lamp, uh, which we don't see. And then it can uh, collect the, uh, the uh, insects here. And there's a small fan here, so it's electric. So this is then uh, blowing the uh, the insects down into this uh, basket, into this hoof, where they are collected. Another simple thing is uh, Berber traps. Berber traps has uh, different uh, types of name. Basically, it is a, uh, you can use a plastic glass or whatever, like this. So that is very fine. And you see, you only dig it down into the, uh, to the ground, so that this is ground. So you dig it down, so it's a little bit below, like this. And then you fill it with water and a little bit of soap, three or four drops of soap uh, per liter. The soap is taking up, up, uh, away the membrane function uh, on the water. So the, when the insects uh, uh, go into this, they will not float on the water. They will start sinking. So here you see some of, uh, one of the results. And then you use, we use this type of exhauster to, uh, to, to pick, pick out. Or we can use this tweezer. Pin set. Um, this is um, another type of insect trap. What you see here. This is a trap to catch the, uh, the bark beetles. And this year there is a lot of bark beetles in the north. And some places even to the south as well. Because of the climate changes. So here you see the bark beetles. Here the, the corridors where the lavas have been digging. This uh, looks like this. Actually, I have the thing here. Such, such a thing. In the bottom, this is the bottom. To the bottom here, we put the, the container. The container, which is, uh, uh, in this case, it is white. If you see in the bottom of the container, there is a... Uh, type of a metal string thing, this thing. So what we usually do is to pull off, this is the, this is the lock, the yellow lock. So we put this up here, we put this on here, and then into there, and so this, this uh, metal goes there and stops there, in this, in the top here, you see. So that makes it make it possible to to collect the the, the insects, the bark beetles. Yeah, I, I do it like this. It gets a little bit complicated in my little room. So you see here, this is the uh, shafts collecting. So in here on the blue top, in here, it's supp supposed to be this uh, smelling things. So here is the hormones, which is attracting the, uh, the, the beetles. So they are put, put here, so then this is in the forest and then attracting the, the insect of these bark beetles. I'm 
sorry, I think the sound is getting problematic when I'm doing so much uh, movements. Then the insects go in here, and then they fall down to the bottom, and then they are stored in this one in, to the end. A lot of things to to remember to put the different this this is hormone things, this is other type of hormones, so you need to mix this and do it. Okay, I will continue. So, well, uh, one thing uh, after the after these beetles, then of course you have the standard insect butterfly hoof. So this is this is uh, for uh, a combination. This is a net for combinations. So it's not only for the butterflies, but uh, for different type of insects, which is uh, living close to or on uh, plants. So this is for collecting on plants. Actually, you see this type of rim here, outer part as well. So this is uh, one of, one of the fancy tools you can. Pull it, unscrew it, and have it as a travel kit in, along in your in your suitcase. We now travel to different places. So then the the way of using it is to you try to move it, of course, like this, and then in the end you close it there, and then you so when you move such, then you close it like that, and then you have the insect here. Then you try to. Uh, put different type of uh, ether or uh, eaters or some type to sedate it, the insects, and then you collect them out when turning this into the so a lot of debris falling, such. Okay. How to do that uh, scientifically? You need to make a manu uh, pro procedure on how many meters you are collecting. How many square types of uh, square meters of different type of uh, plants that you are investigating, and these things to make it make it correct. Here you see a mouse trap. So this is this is another mouse trap of the same type. Type. Yeah. I'll just uh, show you. This is different type of ogres to take all. Um, type uh, different type of uh, samples from soils and such. Here is another uh, machinery for scientific samplings using caterpillars to make uh, soil samples. This is a uh, sampling of uh, vegetation for grass agricultural fields. And this is uh, like the storage in uh, large uh, holes of uh, freezers. So each of them is 600 liters approximately. So then, uh, of course, sorry. Uh, so the inside in the freezers, there are samples. This is samples of bear shit. This is a sample of fish. And it looks like this. We freeze this, basically, either in just in plastic or in alcohol to freeze it to make the sample. So this is a pike in from the zone, the, the year, the number of individuals. And then the individuals is in within this plastic bag. So just showing you another scientific uh, tools, which is the uh, binoculars to observe the birds. So for these things, of course, bird books, field guides, bird guides is important. So this is a, a telescope uh, to use and use it scientifically. That means that you need to have a, man, uh, a procedure to do it. Okay, uh, here is uh, the picture from today's morning outside here. This is a, a black grouse together with a pika pika. So uh, we need to finish. Next lecture is in one and a half minutes.